Hi guys and welcome to season two of the Connect Roundtable Discussion. Yeah. So again, we're back and we just want to say thank you so much for the support. Um, it's been amazing. Our, the feedback has been phenomenal and we're here with season two. Now, if you don't already know, my name is Abigail and I will be your host for this season. And um, we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. So if we can start with you. Hi, my name is Eden. I'm Jaffa. Hi, I'm Barbara. Miriam. GP, Gaspar. Yes, and today we are back with a juicy topic. Um, before we start, I want you to like, comment, share and subscribe, okay? <laughs> so today we are going to be discussing divorce and the church. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go straight into it. So what mm. do you guys um, feel like is the leading cause of divorce? And do you feel like it's discussed in the church. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. for me, I think from observing, yeah. I think that maybe is the lack of communication. Like if there's like an issue, mm. they don't address it from the root. Also, and I think one could be that you know people don't really understand the reason why marriage is established. Mm. It's like marriage is established. It's, the Bible is saying when you get into it, there's no turning back. Mm -hmm. You need to have that in your head when you're saying I do. So do you guys think that when people get married, they still possibly feel like divorce is an option? So they're like, oh, if I go in and I don't like it, then I'm gonna go back out. Because like you said, divorce, um, like marriage is like a one-way one street. I don't think that any of us goes into marriage with the intention of um, going and coming out. Oh, any of us? I see any of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hurry yeah. now, hurry yeah. now. Yeah. Refer back to season one. Yeah. She, said, she yeah. said that I can afford more than 400. I that that, that means mean, she has assumed for me that I can yeah, afford already. more than that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it puts me in a place where I need to spend up no. to her expectations. And yes, sir, it's a field. Whether I love you to the moon and back, I wouldn't spend that on you. <laughs> so yeah, we don't go expecting the negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we go with all our hopes and because we are falling in love and we think that that's the right person for us. Yeah, but I uh, I don't know. Your question was about what's the leading cause. Mm -hmm. I can't uh, tell you that I know that this the particular reason why people go in and come out. But then I believe that one of the things that um, we overlook is the communication bit mm -hmm. not just saying what's on your mind or uh, being able to communicate what you really want the other person to understand mm -hmm. is being able to pick up the little things and the little comments that each other makes yeah so uh, an advice that the pastor gave me was that uh, we shouldn't uh, actually neglect the little things and the little comments. The, the fact that the person is able to comment something, no matter how minute it is, when you are you hear, that means it means something and you must address it. If you neglect these things and you don't pay attention to each other with the little things that we see and bothers us, mm -hmm. we might head to a bigger problem at the end of the day. Okay, yeah. so do you guys think that love is enough? No, no, love is not. No. Why? Why is love enough? Like, if I love someone, then why can't we go the full 90 yards? Okay, I, I, I would say that love is enough. Love is yeah. enough. Right. Yeah, I have a reason why I'm saying love is enough. Because what type of love are, you, uh, are we talking about? When you undergo counseling or when you have, go into marriage seminars, you get to learn that when we talk about love, we have the God love, mm. the God kind of love that we call the agape. Mm. You you need the eros, yeah, and you need the filio, mm. and there is another one. I think there are four of them yeah. as well, yeah. and you need all these in the marriage mm. because the fact that. When some of us, we go because of the errors, mm -hmm. because of our affection, because of maybe mm. uh, our attraction to the person physically, that's why we go into the marriage. But then when you have entered 
and you see the negatives and when uh, you are faced with reality and you know the person's weaknesses what will make you able to stay is when you have the agape love as well because then the agape love the bible tells us in first corinthians chapter 13 that uh, is patient and is kind so it's long suffering so then you'll be able to sit down and not just give up because the person is showing something negative mm. you get it yeah. Yeah. okay so what i wanted to add to it is i agree with thus far to a certain extent so um the godly love i'd say the agape love mm. if you have that in your marriage then because the bible says that love conquers all love breeds faithfulness it breeds honesty love actually can it can get you to so many places if you mm. love somebody you do anything for them so love is enough to some extent mm. but then if you don't have that got to love you just love on the outside then you're going nowhere yeah because um, like again i agree with it but to, just to quickly say something about you see you mentioned something about some of us go into the marriage with just like eros yeah and it's like okay so then because they just went into the marriage with the eros love what about the other love so in, in that case if there's no if there's no intimacy in the in the marriage what else is sustaining what, what other things that are are holding the marriage together what is sustaining them together then mm -hmm. so maybe love is enough to a certain extent but there's also i mean yes you it's need all, all of the the, mm -hmm. the uh different yeah. Some people don't know. Some yeah. of us needs uh, to the knowledge yeah. to be able to know what to do when we are going into marriage. But then, love. When you talk about love in its broad sense, we have love that relates to as friends. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have love, the family kind of love. You, we have the God kind of love. You, you have the sexual attraction kind of love, and all these loves you need to combine them in your marriage for it to work yeah no i actually agree and you've made me see it in a different light yes, because yes. Yeah. like at the beginning you guys said no like yeah. love is not yeah. enough and i think that the reason why we feel like love is not enough is because we don't have the full package, package. package. um and you know god is love so if god is in the marriage then love should be flowing from it and like you said it will breed everything else so i think that is very key no, I was saying I actually agree with you because um, a lot of the times as well it's like people get into marriage and when they don't know who they are themselves. Mm -hmm. So then when it comes to ministry as a marriage, um, because if they don't know who they are and who they've been called to be, they allow the man or they allow the woman yeah. to become their head. Um, and then when my pastor was talking about like the foundation of the family and like the structure of the family, you see that women will be taken over the man because the man doesn't know who they are and vice versa because they're meant to be working hand in hand. Mm. So yeah, it's my yeah so people knowing like knowing their position mm. to making the home function yeah. how god intends it to function um and my question that i wanted to ask you guys as well is for those that are not married <laughs> which is 90 <laughs> percent <laughs> but for us that are not married um do you feel like how the divorce rates is in the church it makes you feel some type of way about getting married I don't think, especially within our community, I'm sure they don't em uh, emphasize or talk about it as much as possibly we would in our generation. Um, but having said that, even if there are a high divorce rate in, in churches, that doesn't, that hasn't changed my perspective of being married. People's experiences are very good for us to learn from. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen that, uh, if you are privileged, to see the trend that there are a lot of divorces in the church and you are interested you also are interested in getting into marriage mm -hmm. then you must make it a point to understand why people's marriages are not working and why you want yours to work mm -hmm. and so the kind of mistakes that maybe your parents made or the kind of mistakes others made you can learn from by listening to them, by going to them. When the time comes, when you have to take that big step to say I do to somebody or to go to somebody and say that, okay, I want to be with you. You have to make sure that you've done your homework. Mm -hmm. You speak to people that you know can help you understand. 
and I know that no two marriages are exactly the same. Yeah. So it's not like it's going to be the same as this because the two people entering into this uh, relationship is different from the other two people. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, their experiences you can learn from and you can glean something from that will help you to relate uh, better mm -hmm. to your partner in yeah. your marriage. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it's opposite for me. I actually didn't want to get married. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. It's changed my mind now, but yeah. <laughs> 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 no. It, the reason why is because I think for me, I saw it more so as it became, I think, culture and religion so mixed up and mm. twined together that like, it became so hard to see what a real marriage looked like. Mm. It looked like okay, let my husband go home. Let me let me do the dishes. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do that. Let me let me serve them. And then I say, whenever they're talking, I have to be quiet, be quiet, sit still, all of that. Um, but then, as you mentioned about marriage being a ministry, it took it really did take pastors preaching, and that wasn't that wasn't even in this year. So you can believe that my mind was changed this year. Um, but it took his um, preaching on the structure of marriage for me to well structure the family for me to then understand that, like you said, you have to have all the components together. I think we tend to forget um, the words of like heroes and man. A gap and stuff like that, and we just change it to friends, communication, laughter. To do it. But um, yeah, so it took all of that to understand that you have to have the function with every single thing and without every single component, the component to free, then it wouldn't have worked. So, in terms of communication, why? Because sometimes it happens that people they become to know about situations after they get married, so they didn't have their all the information before you know saying yes but you need to so, do your homework no, no yeah <laughs> but no, sometimes you do your homework but you don't maybe the other part is uh omitting or you know is scared to share omitting. some things no you but know? you don't get so, you don't get to marry the person if you're scared from the beginning what are you scared of I don't know. No. So you're saying like, why? Yeah, yeah. You, that, cause, cause some of the reasons. So the person just wanted to get married, so they omitted some information. Or something. They, maybe they didn't be, think it was. I don't know. I'm yeah, saying like, it was really maybe it was really, really, to, yeah, to that time maybe it wasn't relevant. Yeah. But then if maybe at that time that person or the, the other person would have known, mm -hmm. maybe a decision would have been different. So mm -hmm. sometimes like, I, what do you think is the reason why people actually not are not yeah. opening up yeah. straight away or? You know until it's too late we are christian so we are talking from the christian perspective of marriage you find things out and when you find out once the decision has already been made and you are in the marriage you need to work on it yeah. so like uh abby you said that um it's a ministry yeah. ministry itself is work so that means marriage is work mm -hmm. you need to work at it yeah. you can't a fire cannot keep burning until you keep fueling it. Mm -hmm. So you must keep the fire burning and it's a conscious effort. Mm -hmm. You must work together. And uh, my dear, I'm very happy that you said that now you are convinced about marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Praise Woo! God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ideal marriage, yeah, I, I've not been married long, but then, yeah. God, he says is the groom, the church is his bride. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that doesn't mean that the, the church is always perfect. We are all in it. We do so many things. There are so many things that go wrong. But God still stays by his decisions and his promises. Wow. And he still tries and he lends the hand right. and keep calling us back to himself. Right. The same way. But at the same time, you must realize that the relationship between God and the church is like God has his role to, to play. And the church has his role to play. The mm -hmm. same way a husband has the things that he needs to do and the wife has things she needs to do and both doing their own things together makes the marriage work mm -hmm. god will forgive you god is there willing to accept you but if you don't take the step there are certain things god will not do for you mm -hmm. you get it so in the same way in the marriage you don't expect one side of the marriage to do the things and you are there receiving it will not work mm -hmm. so in in these things you know that in the marriage there are phases there are challenges there are times but then when you work together and you have each other's back yeah. things will work yeah like what one wise young man said um he will love in spite of so in spite of anything you go through in spite of the challenges you go through that love that we've been talking about should be the main factor and the thing is i feel like some people because 
they don't know how to handle each other in certain circumstances is is then the reason why it leads them to divorce when a storm comes they they, they don't know how to work together to, yeah. to overcome it mm. so because like, of that they then they like they flee yeah. to different directions you know mm. what i'm saying so i think again love in spite of and work together as a team that's how we can possibly tackle divorce but communication is the main factor mm. because mm. through all that you need to be communicating with each other how can we handle this situation how can we overcome it what can mm. we do next about it and I was gonna say, like, I've had um, someone say that um, marriage, marriage will not take you to heaven, mm-hmm. but it can take you to, to hell. hell. Mm-hmm. And that is very important. And like, we need to keep that in mind that it's something that God has created, but the enemy can use it to lead you to destruction. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is because one, maybe you're not fulfilling the roles that God has called you to in the household or like the communication thing which I think is very important not working together as a team like you said we're supposed to be one but if maybe I feel like I can't come to you to discuss it because I don't feel like you're a team player then that's where the issue comes because then I'm going to try and fix things which in essence is going to start breaking more things Mm -hmm. and before you know it we're in pastor's office and <laughs> so, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think, especially this generation, going back to my question, this generation, I think we are more blessed and more privileged. Obviously, I'm, I'm not in the old generation, so I don't know, but I think we have a lot more resources, a lot more teachings, a lot more seminars. I mean, I, I can count yeah. on 101 seminars that I personally have been to. So there, there's so many resources. I feel like this generation, we definitely need to do better Mm -hmm. Um, and not just go in. The reason why love is not enough is because we're looking at the Eros kind of love. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like, oh yeah, he's cute, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna make lovely babies. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like that's what, some people are shallow like that, but Mm -hmm. then you need to realize that, nah, there's a calling Mm -hmm. and we have been called to, you know, our marriage is supposed to bring people to the kingdom of God. So guys, I hope that you've learned a lot from our discussion today. Um, If you have anything to add, please drop it in the comments, share this video so that we can get awareness um, that what we have discussed today, that God is love and that he is the foundation of every marriage and that we need to be more intentional and understand that marriage is a ministry and that if we're getting in, it's not because someone looks good, but it's because there is a purpose for us and um, I believe that us all here are going to be a lot more intentional um, if and when we do get married and the Bible says that how can two walk together unless they agree so I just want to leave you with that note and stay connected